Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Hsu, author of the Lightroom blog and Lightroom workshops on video at laurashu.com. In this video, I'll go over the new features here in the book module in Lightroom Classic 7.5. We have great new freeform layout capabilities, new less expensive trade book and magazine options, photo borders, new page number options, and the ability to pause and resume a book upload to Blurb. Let's start with the freeform layout capabilities. For this page, I've selected a format with two photos and text. Now, the photo cells and the text cells in any page format you choose can be moved, resized, or deleted. And you can also add additional text cells. Let's take a look at how it works. The cells will now have handles on them. Drag on the center square handle to move a cell. I'll move this one down as well. Drag on the square handles on the edges to resize a photo cell or a text cell. Now, if you accidentally drag elsewhere on the edge, not on a square handle, you'll be affecting padding rather than cell size. So remember to drag on the handles. Now to help you line up and place photos, we have a couple more guides here in the guides panel. First, we have a page grid. Now, you'll find that as you drag photos, they won't snap to the grid. Hopefully that will be coming. In the meantime, we also have guidelines. So as you drag your selected cell, you'll see the guidelines move to help you line up the cells. To get cells precisely aligned, do zoom in to one to one, or better yet, to four to one, using the preview panel in the top left. To nudge a cell just a little bit, make sure that it's selected, then hold down the Alt key on PC or Option key on Mac and use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now one mistake I find myself making a lot is going to move a photo cell and accidentally dragging the photo out of the cell or swapping with another one. I'll do Ctrl or Command Z. The problem was I didn't drag from this square handle. So remember to do that. Now we can also remove cells. I'll right click on this one and choose remove. And then we can add cells. Right click, add cell, photo. Let me drag this photo back in. I'll leave it that size and I'll turn off the guides. Now the text boxes that come with the page formats can be moved and resized just like the photo cells. You can add additional text boxes by right-clicking and choosing Add Cell Photo Description. These look exactly the same. You can drag to move the cell and resize. Despite the name Photo Description, these actually are not connected to the photos. These are different, for example, from a photo caption. If I select this photo, I still get the old Add Photo Text, which adds a photo caption. This is directly connected to the photo and can pull from the metadata for your photo, title, caption, exposure, etc. These photo captions can't be resized or dragged freeform across the page. They can just be dragged up and down. That's also true if I select the page now for the Add Page Text button. These can just be dragged up and down. Now it's not going to matter what type of text box you use unless your goal is to draw from the metadata for your photos. In that case, use photo captions. Now remember that you can save your page layouts for use on other pages in your book or in other books. Just right click and choose Save as Custom Page. Then you'll find those over here in the Page panel under Custom Pages. Now I almost forgot to mention that now that we can resize photos, we can have overlapping photos or several photos on top of another. To control which one is on top, right click and choose Send to Back or Bring to Front. Send Backward would take it one step at a time if there are three or more overlapping photos. Send to Back will take it all the way. So that's it for freeform layouts. Let's talk next about the new Photo Borders feature. To add a photo border, select one or more cells, and then down in the Cell panel, 
check photo border. To change the color, click on the color square and choose a color. To get to a wider range of colors, click in this vertical bar here. I'll take a color from the photo by clicking in the color picker here, holding the mouse down, and dragging over to the photo. Then I'll close this. And I'll increase the width on that border. And I'll click in the gray so that we can see it. Now right now, the photo is zoomed to fill the cell. I'll right click in this photo and I'll uncheck Zoom Photo to Fill Cell so that it fits into the cell. Now you can see that the border actually goes around the cell and not the photo. To get the border around the photo, you have two options. One is to right click and zoom the photo to fill the cell. That does, however, crop off part of the image. I'll right click and uncheck Zoom Photo. The other option is to change the size of the cell to be the same size as the photo. I'll show you another little cool effect. I'll select the photo cell again, and then I'll add some padding, and then I'll click away. Let's go on to new book formats that we have here. In book settings under book, we now have Blurb Photo Book, Blurb Magazine, and Blurb Trade Book. Blurb Photo Book is the same thing you had before. It was just called Blurb. The Blurb Photo Book is the highest quality book that you can order. Blurb magazines and trade books are significantly cheaper. Now when you change formats, you're going to get a message that Lightroom will have to re-lay out your book. If you've done a lot of work laying out your book and you change the format, you're going to have to do either a little or a lot of cleanup. So make the decision on book format before you do a lot of work. I'll go ahead and change the format. The magazine is 8.5 by 11. Trade books come in three different sizes, starting with 5 by 8 and then going up to 8 by 10. The paper quality and quality of the printing for trade books are not as high as for photo books, but they are significantly cheaper. Now, if you're considering a trade book or a magazine, or even making your first photo book, I would strongly suggest that you order a swatch kit from Blurb, which have photos and text printed on all the different papers so that you can see and feel them and get a sense for what kind of quality you're going to get. If you have photos with intense colors or a lot of contrast, they're going to be more washed out with a trade book than they would be with a photo book. You can compare pricing in detail if you go on Blurb's website, or you can add a bunch of blank pages to your book, as many as you think you might make a book with, and then compare prices with the different options here. One more option that we have is under Photo Book. There's a new paper type here, which is the standard lay flat. So these are photo books that will lay flat when they're open. I think they're really cool. They're also a lot more expensive. Now these new book formats and paper types have different maximum number of pages. So I'll put up here the maximum number of pages by format and you can pause this video and write them down if you're interested. I'll go back to multi-page view here. Another enhancement has to do with page numbers. Now we've had the option to add page numbers, as well as the option to specify where they go. I'll put them in the bottom corner. We now have the option to display them just on the right page, or just on the left page, or on both left and right pages. Finally, once you click on Send Book to Blurb, and then you log in and the book starts uploading, if you need to pause the upload for any reason, You'll be able to click on the status bar that will appear here, and then you'll have a button to pause and then to resume the upload. So that's it for new features here in the book module. To be honest, I was surprised that Adobe was working on the book module, but I'm really happy with what they've done. If you've enjoyed this video, please show your support by subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'm Laura Shue.